Welcome, everybody. Today's topic is cannabidiol or CBD for chronic pain. And I want to discuss this uh, in some detail and give you some practical applications how you can use uh, CBD specifically for the chronic pain situation. Go into a little bit of the background about cannabidiol and uh, how it works. What we're going to talk about today for chronic pain is is a bit of the vicious cycle of chronic pain, sort of the nature of what happens with chronic pain, and about how CBD works on acute and chronic pain. In addition, we'll go into some detail about opioid and endocannabinoid receptors, and then I'll drill down into some of my specific recommendations for chronic pain. In addition, I'm going to be, I'll review the key points that we talked about, and then I'll provide some references uh, in a document that you can pick up at Google Documents. My background, um, I've listed it off here. And when we're talking about chronic pain, we're talking about a complex problem here. Probably there's a trillion dollars uh, that is spent um, per year on um, on the economy uh, about chronic pain. It entails a huge amount of impairment, disability, and of course there's addiction associated with some of the, the drugs that are being used currently in current medical practice, as well as a depression that's associated with it. And of course, the worst thing that we can see is death related to chronic pain. Now, on the right side of the slide, I show this vicious cycle of pain where somebody initiates and develops chronic pain and then they, they develop avoidance behavior, there's decreased mobility, an altered functional status, so they're no longer functional at their duties or their home life or whatever they have to do. And then there's diminished self-efficacy uh, uh, about the way they feel about things. And then there's social limitations. And all this leads into a complex problem uh, that produces a great deal of difficulty for patients and creates that, that part of that trillion dollars that, that make up that goes into it. And so this cycle is much more than just, gee, I have a pain in my arm or my back. It's much more complicated than that. You see it has these implications all over the body and throughout our lives. When we're talking about chronic pain, there is no one specific piece of that that uh, is, is the problem. You need to look at this in terms of um, the other associated factors that go along with chronic pain. And once chronic pain starts, of course, there's the acute, the acute pain. But when chronic pain has been around for several months, you develop these other things that, that are, are associated with it and become problems in and of themselves. There's things like inflammation, spasm, immobility, um, cognitive impairment, irritability, sleep disruption, depression, eating disorders. All of these things make the problem of chronic pain much worse than just that pain in that one area. So often we, uh, even as providers, we think, well, they've got a pain in their back. You know, we want to take care of that pain, but we don't look at those other things. Those other things about the, the whole person and the whole person concept. And that's where I think cannabidiol can play a major role in improving people's lives in, in a great way. So if we're looking at the current medications, uh, the current medications that on chronic pain really fall short in a number of different areas. First of all, they don't address the whole patient. They're just trying to take care of the, the analgesia or spasm that occurs rather than looking at the whole person that's there. In addition, uh, narcotics and non steroidal anti-inflammatories have serious adverse effects and don't really help with the healing. They certainly help with reduction of pain, and our, and our logic says that if the pain is gone, then we can take care of our normal function and we can maintain our health. But that's not necessarily true. In addition, the higher and higher dosages of uh, the narcotics um, in particular are required because of the, the effect of tolerance, part where an, a higher dose of drug, uh, an adjustment in the body, and then uh, higher doses are required, leading to addiction and withdrawal problems are really complicate the problem in a great way. Furthermore, when you get into the use of higher levels of medication, you're really getting into cognitive and physical impairment because they're no longer able to function in their normal capacity. And of course, 
we're dealing with the epidemic of problems with overdoses and deaths presently from the overuse and the over-reliance on narcotics. And the other problem that, that we're involved with is narcotics is that they don't really address completely the problem. There may be some indication that they actually worsen the chronic pain. Now, early on, certainly, and uh, particularly after surgery, the pain medications are certainly the narcotics are needed. But after a period of time, it may be that they actually um, make the pain worse. And so the, the misguided attempts for physicians in our country to treat the pain, always treat the pain and make sure people are, are controlled on the pain, may actually have, at least with narcotics, may have had an, an adverse side effect overall in terms of worsening the problem rather than ultimately helping people get through the difficulties that they're dealing with. So how can cannabidiol really work for pain? And, and what are the ways that, that we see with it? First of all, we can see, we know that cannabidiol is effective for acute and chronic pain. And about 70% of patients actually respond to the analgesic effects alone from the cannabidiol. Furthermore, there are multiple pathways that are involved with that CBD uses in in addition to the endocannabinoid system, there's also the opioid system. And I'll explain a little bit more about that um, further on. The analgesia has reduced narcotic use by as much as 80% in some clients, eliminating the tolerance, addiction, overdose, and withdrawal that occurs with the opioid. This is a different approach and a different understanding that the cannabidiol actually blocks the addictive response and from um, using high doses of uh, opioids, it reduces that craving that goes on. In addition, they, there is no um, worsening of the overdose effect. By reducing the narcotic use, you're going to reduce the chances for overdose. And in addition, I think you can prevent the withdrawal from the opioids. Typically, clients have reported they've been able to drop their dosage without any problems with withdrawal. Um, and the adverse effects that are typically associated with that. Now, CBD potentiates those non-narcotic agents as well, things like acetaminophen, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. It helps those work better so that less doses are required, which reduces the chances of side effects. But it also multiplies the effects so that you're going to get those particular benefits with those low-risk medications, as well as getting the effects from cannabidiol specifically. Now, I want you to realize that there's no toxicity or adverse effects or any drug interactions that we're seeing with cannabidiol. So you see, it, it seems like an ideal agent that should be used in conjunction with other uh, analgesics or independently if people can tolerate. And I'll have to tell you that a number of my clients have reported after having surgery, have been able to rely on CBD entirely for their post-operative pain after they leave the hospital. So when we're talking about the endocannabinoid system, we're looking at a system that it covers the entire body, but mainly focused in uh, what we're talking about today with the pain is, has to do with the, the nerves and the nervous, both in the brain and the peripheral, peripheral nervous system, but as well as the spine. And classically, we've been We've understood that we're talking when we're talking endocannabinoid, we're talking about the CB1 receptors and the CB2. But here we have another receptor that's involved in the chronic pain, and that's the transient receptor protein vanilloid number one. And that is intimately involved with the pain thresholds. In fact, that's the one where um, the hot peppers. Uh, capsaicin is used to reduce pain for that chronic pain in different joints. And what cannabidiol is doing is blocking that particular receptor pathway so that we're reducing pain um, in all tissues, uh, even in, including the spinal cord, for um, blocking those pain transmissions uh, for the majority. And we're getting that analgesic effect through that mechanism. In addition, we're actually encountering the opioid system. And the opioid system is quite fascinating. Of course, we're well aware that the opioid um, receptors are there and the narcotics are using those to provide analgesia. 
But probably one of the things that you, you may not be aware of is that endocannabinoids actually modulate the opioid receptors so that you're having a controlling factor. And the evidence for this is quite interesting. The brain has a number of focal areas for um, the opioid receptors as well as cannabinoid receptors, and they overlap. And then if we're looking specifically at the receptors that are on the membranes, we're seeing two parts to that receptor. One part that uh, takes uh, the form for the opioid specifically, but there is a co-receptor uh, channel that's available in that specific receptor that is designed for the cannabinoid. And so what we're doing is we're getting modulation of the uh, opioid receptor as a result of the cannabinoids that are circulating. And what, when we're using um, things like cannabinoids and specifically CBD, we're getting a control and modulation of this, this opioid receptor, and thereby it's going to be able to reduce that the high effect that is frequently experienced with opioids, as well as the addictive symptoms that come from it. In addition, we're talking about prevention of withdrawal. A number of clients have reported that uh, they've been able to reduce their dosage without any symptoms whatsoever. These are my recommendations for chronic pain and using cannabidiol. First off, the starting dose for cannabidiol is, is typically for the tinctures, 15 milligrams twice a day. That's a starting dose. What you have to understand is that the target dose for pain is somewhat higher than that, and you may need to go higher. You've got to adjust to meet the patient's needs. So what I find as a chronic, uh, in chronic pain, the target is about 30 milligrams two or three times a day. Adjust the dose and the frequency according to the symptoms. You well realize that you may not be able to get all of the pain extinguished. But remember that there are a number of factors in chronic pain, problems with sleep, um, with uh, constipation, uh, with the loss of cognitive abilities. All these things can be corrected and, and adjusted, and cannabidiol is going to be helpful at, at adjusting for those things and integrating these, these people back into activity, which is going to, once again, uh, help uh, their control their and, redu and reduce their chronic pain. In addition to using it orally, you can also use it topically. And a lot of patients, especially for localized areas of pain, uh, you're certainly not going to take a bath in cannabidiol, but for an localized areas, let's say the back, um, an application on that area typically provides some significant relief. I would continue with the oral dosage and use the topical for those exacerbations that occur or getting it an extra focus where in those areas where the pain is happening. In addition, you'll be able to uh, taper the drugs uh, after you've found in a CBD effective dose, and you'll get them away from the toxic effect from the narcotics or those other agents that, that are being used. This will give you a chance to incorporate some of the alternative and complementary therapies that are maybe part of your practice. Diet, exercise, it may be acupuncture or it may be um, osteopathic uh, manipulation. All of those things are going to make a difference and help improve the endocannabinoid system as well as reduce the pain sensitivity of that individual. So many of these things will be improved uh, as well as in uh, sleep and calmness and rest. And they all make a big difference in the chronic pain patient, getting them back into an active lifestyle and functioning in a normal capacity. So let me review the key points here that we're talking about um, initiating therapy, uh, early follow-up, and rapid adjustments. And what I mean by early follow-up is that you need to make sure that the patient is taking it, taking it right, that they are using it in the right dose, that they understand the directions. Because this is an unusual substance, they frequently will make mistakes and not realize completely the whole benefits. In fact, some patients don't even realize that they're getting the benefits, and it's helpful if you can observe them or um, find out how they're doing and uh, make observations to help them know that they're getting the impact. The other thing is the, the improvement in the whole person concept. So you're improving their sleep as well as their analgesia, 
Um, you're improving their mood um, and their functionality and their, and their activation. All those things make a big difference for it. It stops the tolerance, addiction, and withdrawal, as well as the um, um, overdose uh, risk that is involved with opioids. So if you're going to use opioids, I think this is a perfect partner to be using with it. Um, it's going to help reduce the dosage and uh, those adverse effects that go along with opioids. And if you're looking at a failure of it to work, now that happens in some percentage of patients, but number one, verify that the dose and the, the directions that the patient is using, that they're using the right amount because there is a lot of confusion that occurs. And once again, let me reiterate that this is, the cannabidiol is safe, it's effective, it's non-toxic, and it doesn't interfere with the other drugs that the patients are taking. In fact, that reminds me to bring up that Cannabidiol will also block the withdrawal effects for many of the benzodiazepines and other substances that are out there. So you can feel a lot more comfortable in getting away from those drugs that tend to potentiate the chronic pain rather than really helping the problem. Now we're doing these presentations on a weekly basis. I want to get this information out to providers so they can get it to their patients and they can apply Elixinol and CBD in a very effective way. And as I mentioned, I am available for consultation. And I'll be happy to talk with uh, providers uh, as well as patients who need that particular consultation. You may need to go quite higher with fibromyalgia, sometimes on the order of 180 milligrams per day. Now that doesn't have to continue at that dose. I don't see much benefit going beyond 200 milligrams a day. That doesn't seem to make it more effective in this type of problem. Um, if you're getting up to the 200 milligrams a day, it doesn't look like that's going to work out for you. Maybe another strategy that's involved. In one of my other talks, I, I mentioned that it's very important that people be taking adequate amounts of omega-3 fatty acids because they're precursors for the endocannabinoid system that has to be there in order for cannabidiol to be working. And then we're, if we're talking about Lyme disease, that's another very difficult problem. I see typically um, 180 milligrams is also required in many cases for that. Now, fortunately, you're able to reduce the dose over a period of time. In terms of other things that they can take with it to in, enhance the effects of the cannabidiol, there's a wide range. There's certainly the alternative and um, complementary practices that most providers have and are using are good strategies. Um, and I really encourage that those be used. Great seeing you, and thanks a lot for uh, coming to the presentations. I hope this has been valuable for you.